This is a brief introduction to the Dial E framework, a framework for the application of digital artifacts for learning engagement. This is a framework, and we in no way suggest that we have originated new pedagogy. What we have done is conceptualize a range of learning design approaches within a variety of different learning and teaching spaces with a view to supporting individuals engagement uh, with digital artifacts. We focused very much on the learning opportunities afforded by these artifacts rather than on any aspect of the technology or the digital nature of artifacts themselves. We've been developing this as a matrix in workshops using a paper-based tool such as the one illustrated here. And you can see that we have a matrix that consists on two axes of learning spaces and specific learning designs. The learning spaces consists of mobile, independent, virtual, practical or laboratory space, small spaces and large spaces, and a range of learning designs that I'll come to in just a moment. The spaces, as we've developed the framework, have clearly begun to merge. Small spaces are difficult to define. Virtual spaces may be totally immersive realities or may be relatively flat two-dimensional virtual learning environments. And so for now, we sought to illustrate the learning designs in as many different flavors of environment as possible, whilst recognizing that this area of the framework will require further clarification. I'd like to focus on the 10 learning designs in some detail. For clarification purposes, I think we should explore these one by one, and I'll explain the color coding shortly. Stimulation is perhaps the most obvious of the learning designs. It's simply a question of bringing learners front and center, holding their imagination in lots of different ways. And we began these discussions around the news film online resources and were struck by the power of some of the news film archives, the visual video archives, as starter or plenary sessions. But we then began to explore the idea of topping and tailing sessions, for instance, removing the sound from a video archive at the beginning of a session uh, and then revealing the clip again at the end of the session with the sound and vice versa, perhaps playing a soundtrack without images at the beginning of a session, asking students to visualize the nature of that material and then bringing them back. The ability of that material to provide some disruption to learners' conceptions about particular subjects to shock them was also very evident in the context of the News Film Online archives. But as we began to explore this in the context of other material, we saw equal possibilities. The idea that one might use parliamentary papers, for instance, or some of the uh, newspaper archives and simply remove the headlines from the body of a story or remove an image from uh, parliamentary papers and read the description and then have a look at the image subsequently. The idea that, that what you're trying to do is to simply bring students front and center using a resource and capitalize on the, the novelty of that particular resource, perhaps, to that particular audience. It's also true that all resources provide some opportunity for exploring the narrative that they contain. Parliamentary papers will actually contain a narrative over time of something that's been debated in the context of uh, parliamentary debate, for instance. News film might show a number of different stories over a long period of time, and one might compare and contrast different archive materials so that a story told in the context of news film could be compared to that taught in discussed in the press, that something actually being debated in the medical backfiles as a serious medical issue might be compared to that being presented in the popular media of the time. There's a great deal of emphasis on collaboration and we are increasingly looking for ways to get individuals to work together to learn some of those collaborative group working skills. The media itself 
whether it's print-based or visual media or sound archives, provide opportunities for students to work together to explore tasks. This is separate from authoring, which I'll come to in just a moment. It could be a simple question of setting observation tasks or exploring the narrative elements that we've already discussed, but to do so in a collaborative context. Conceptualization for us contains a number of subcategories. Essentially, we're asking uh, learners to contemplate the notion that individual resources contain within them the opportunity to uh, postulate a particular hypothesis and explore it. It's perhaps something that's more immediately evident in sciences, but all of the media provide this opportunity to say what actually happened next. And it's possible for individuals to look at materials across different collections and predict perhaps what's going to happen from a news story item, observe how it was reported in the popular press or in parliamentary papers if there's a time overlap, and then look to try and explain uh, in the context of the original prediction uh, some kind of conclusion. All of the resources are very rich and contain a lot of data. And it's a very useful skill to be able to synthesize some small element from uh, a larger whole. We began this in the context of News Film Online, looking at the possibility that individuals might be offered 10 minutes of footage and asked to carry the story but whilst editing it to only two, for instance. Part of that process might be to remove the key salient elements of an argument and present them uh, as containing the whole story and ask oneself what one actually is leaving out of that story. This in fact is teaching students very valuable skills in terms of synthesis and extrapolation and interpolation and to do that uh, we think is, is of great benefit to students in all areas of their study and across all the disciplines. The skill of visualization, the ability to mind map or to represent diagrammatically connections between topics and themes either within one particular visual source or within a range of different media to draw together perhaps a mind map of different elements from different media is a useful skill. And the detailed analysis uh, of a particular resource, breaking it down into its constituent parts, identifying specific elements which represent specific viewpoints is also a higher order skill. All of these feed into a broader process of inquiry, which is also a common theme in higher education today. We're looking to see whether or not the resources could be used to help students build an argument. We've had some interesting illustrations of this in our workshops. One simple one I provide here would be uh, using the HISPOP uh, archives, which contain overview census data as well as a lot of maps. And it's interesting that perhaps our assumptions about what are in some of the archive materials need to be challenged. The parliamentary papers, for instance, are not just uh, accounts or papers of, of, that, of the spoken word, but also contain rich resources for maps and so on. In this example, I've stated a question about an individual and their particular working environment and asked a question as to how many times an individual might cross a railway line. And the students would have to go out and identify what it was they didn't know and what information they required to be able to answer that question using the very rich resources that are available. Authoring is a learning design which actually asks students to create digital artifacts themselves. This may be to re-represent a new story from a previous uh, newspaper archive in a contemporary presentational style perhaps to shoot an updated version of a news film archive story or to represent something from the medical back files as a popular contemporary news footage so on. A lot of the materials are incredibly challenging and the opportunity to use them to develop the empathy skills of students to explore ideas around role play and decision making using some of the resources I mentioned under the context of stimulation that some of these materials are incredibly shocking and some of these we think are particularly powerful if handled well. Some of the materials uh, can be presented as very challenging from different viewpoints and the medical backfiles for instance 
contains information uh, and articles about physician assisted suicide, euthanasia, abortion, female circumcision and so on. And these are very challenging subjects which perhaps all students, regardless of discipline again, might be challenged with. Engagement with the archive resources, a variety of different search interfaces, a variety of different referencing systems, allows students to engage with a number of different contemporary research skills. In the context of News Film Online, we began to consider the power of some of the news film to represent different perspectives. It was clear that the director and the filmmaker had a particular compositional or aesthetic idea which they sought to pursue. In the context of other archives, we then began to develop this idea and see that the materials themselves are often worthy of a greater degree of attention. It's interesting to look in the context, for instance, of, of print or sound and different elements of composition and aesthetics and challenge students' conceptions, their preconceptions of how uh, material is put together. Something uh, as simple as an order of procession, for instance, might be compared from uh, a newspaper archive in the 19th century to a modern order of procession perhaps at a university graduation to look at the way in which this is represented both on paper, the way in which titles are referred to and so on in order to see how tradition has persisted to perhaps question the way in which uh, honours are represented within a system or status and hierarchies are presented within the context of an audio sound archive one might be interested in what is being said but one might also be interested in some aspects of uh, international analysis or regional dialect and vocabulary for instance. During our workshops we identified a tenth category, that of figurative. It became clear that media often can be used to represent something quite different from that which was actually featured as its subject matter. We had an example in the workshop of a, an interview which we believed was a useful representation of public perceptions of science, an interview between a British journalist and an American scientist, which in the workshop was debated and discussed and felt that it could represent uh, an allegory for the relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States in the, in the years immediately preceding the Second World War. So these designs, these ten designs, we then began to develop uh, a little bit more and felt that perhaps we would want to group them, as you can see they are colour-coded, into three broad areas which represent for us a progressive level of engagement for students. That we start with those which are essentially engagement, we develop into a more advanced process of knowledge construction and finally some more reflective practice. Now this is one way in which people may engage with the framework. One might consider that as students move up through the levels a greater level of knowledge construction is required followed by a greater degree of reflection and so on. But all of them are designed, all ten designs are intended to simply stimulate students engagement reflection and knowledge construction with and through the particular media. We believe the framework represents a variety of different opportunities in a variety of different spaces and these spaces will differ between learning contexts so that large institutions delivering face-to-face -face may well focus largely on small space and large space designs others dealing increasingly with extramural study might want to focus more on the mobile technologies and virtual designs. It's our intention that we will develop these so that all of the designs that we've been describing will sit within a matrix and be populated with a variety of examples at each of the intersections between a learning design and a space so that individuals approaching the framework would be able to look for an illustration, a representative illustration, of each of these in practice. This is something which is an ongoing program of development, building up from all of the workshops that we're running under the DALI framework model. 